Hey, Sean and Allison here from Spoken Garden. Hi, everybody. Hey, we're here to help you become a better gardener. Yep, and today is Friday, which we love because it's Friday Plant Chat. Friday Plant Chat. So we get to talk about a plant around our yard to help you become a better gardener, get to know it better, and care for it, right? Yep, and today we're talking about Dianthus Paint the Town Magenta. Oh, these are gorgeous little plants from Proven Winners. Proven. They're a perennial in our zone here yep. in Zone 8B. Yep. So we're going to break it down for you today. Yep, so first we're going to give you the plant facts, how to grow it, how to care for it, and then we're going to give you the information on how to uh, use it out in your garden, texture, and some other great things. Yay! So, yeah, let's get to it. Here we go. So here we are. These are Paint the Town Magenta Pinks or Paint the Town Magenta Dianthus. Uh, these plants are known commonly as just Dianthus or Pinks. You'll see people refer to them as that. That's what these are. These are an actual hybrid. And so uh, these have been mixed uh, genetically with other Dianthus to have this beautiful plant as you see it right here. You can see it's got the single magenta flower. See how beautiful that is? Isn't that just gorgeous? Wow, I love how soft that looks. And it's just, it almost looks like it glows. And then it's got this kind of grayish, whitish, blue, uh, looking green leaves and that texture man that is just so beautiful and these plants are known for that so uh, paint the town magenta it actually is zoned for 4a to 9b so it has a range uh, it's considered a perennial a mounding perennial it is evergreen uh, in these zones in 4a to 9b and you can divide it uh, when it gets big enough. And we'll talk to you more about that in a little bit. Now, this plant likes moderate to regular watering. Um, it likes more neutral or even alkaline, kind of a higher pH type of soil. And so keep that in mind when you're looking to add this to your garden. So you might be wondering, where does this plant like to be placed? Does it like full sun? Does it like part sun? Does it like mostly shade? Uh, this plant loves, this specific hybrid loves part sun to full sun. And it was actually bred to be in full sun locations. Unlike a lot of Dianthus out there, these plants will thrive and grow in full sun locations. A lot of the other Dianthus out there that aren't these hybrids, uh, just your general Dianthus, they do like more part shade, part sun locations. So this plant can have a lot more uses out in your garden. And Allison will talk to you about that in a bit. Uh, you can see right now it's in bloom. It's flowering. It's looking gorgeous. This plant will bloom in the right conditions, in the right garden. It'll bloom twice a year. It'll bloom in spring to summer, and then it'll bloom in late summer to early fall. So that's why you're seeing it bloom right now. And we feel so lucky that it is actually blooming and, and giving us this beauty right now. So not only was this plant bred to be in full sun locations and to take full sun, it's also bred to be uh, heat tolerant and drought tolerant. So, I mean, that is that is amazing. Most of your Dianthus don't have that. They're not that tolerant of heat and drought. So th again, this is a great plant, an amazing plant to have in your garden just for that. Now, you do have to deadhead these plants on a regular basis to keep them coming back. Um, and you'll keep them tidy, keep the disease down, pests down if you keep them nice and tidy. And so to do that, what you would need to do is you're going to need to have either your hand shears or your uh, micro snips. And we have both of those right here from Corona Tools. So, and links will be down below for these if you want to check those out. Um, so what you would do, I'm going to use the micro snips here. We can see here's some spent flowers here and we've got some new ones coming up, but it's starting to slow down because we haven't deadheaded yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go right here. Here's our dead flower. It's all done. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to follow this stem down to where it intersects with the other part of the stem and there's a new bud and new growth right there. I'm going to come right down here and cut this old stem with this old flower just above that and that's how you deadhead these. You just keep kind of going through, get these off and this is really going to make the plant want to rebloom and keep blooming until it gets too cool and the conditions change for into the later fall and winter months. We got that Yep, we got those stellar jays out here just cracking away, clacking away. So, they want something. Wow. Now, lastly, you're probably asking, well, how big are these plants actually going to get? What should I expect? Uh, how should I expect them? How big should I expect them to get out in my garden when I plant them? And so, these plants will get six to eight inches tall. They're going to grow 12 to 14 inches wide. And with that spacing in mind, that's why we planted these plants uh, the way we did with that spacing. These are on 12 inch centers. So 
they're they're supposed to grow under the best conditions uh, to 12 to 18 inches, you know, uh, out. So about six to seven inches from on center in the plant out. So if we do that, that's about to here. And then this one, so there's gonna be some overlap as we've got them planted already, but that's okay. Now, when these plants start to get a lot bigger and they, they actually reach full maturity, they're gonna get to that 12 to 14 inches in diameter size, you can start to think about and plan for dividing them to take those divided plants to, to cut the plant in portion uh, off of it, take it and go add it to another part of your garden. And basically it's division. These plants you can propagate through division, which is so fun. And what you're really doing is you're looking at this plant, it's got this crown growth, all these different buds um, are coming up from this crown, they're growing up and that's what you're seeing here. If you, when you get to the point where these plants are healthy, they're big enough and you wanna divide them, you can just take a shovel or even a hand trowel or maybe a hori hori knife and cut them right down the center or you can take a little wedge out and take that piece out of uh, where it's at and go put it in another part of your garden, give it to your neighbor or your mom and dad or you know whatever and you can create a whole new plant from that. And so that is one way to propagate this plant. And so it's so much fun. Okay, so we are in our front yard now, and this is a use for these dianthus where they're actually in a full sun location. In fact, the sun's creeping up on us here, so um, I'm gonna try to hurry so you can see what we're talking about. But basically, these, these plants all in this area are all considered drought tolerant when they're at their maturity, when they're fully grown. So right now we're treating them like new plantings, but what you see here is four dianthus, the paint the town magenta pinks right here in the front row, I know it looks kind of underwhelming because they're not all in bloom yet, but um, you can see some bloom starting to pop in and there's tons coming in. I can see a lot from here. So we deadheaded these dianthus about two weeks ago and now again, they're starting to rebloom. So we, as, if, as long as you keep up on it, like Sean was saying, you'll see, keep seeing that color. What we have going on here is a planting where this bed's kind of in flux a little bit still, but we went ahead and planted them here so we could get them established. We can always move them later and we'll probably end up doing that because they're now behind a row of taller plants. So that is not what we would recommend by any means, but this is just kind of how it worked out and what space we had available in our garden. So right now, if we were to talk about companion plants, we've got some great ideas for you because Dianthus, these guys can pretty much be planted with just about anything. Since they take part sun to full sun, that gives you a lot of options. So right now we have them planted in um, kind of a grouping with some cat's pajamas, Napita right behind them. We even have the Price's White cone flowers. These are all proven winner's plants. And we have two very young Back to the Fuchsia salvias growing in the background. So if you think about it, we have a row of bright pink, we have purple when these will be in bloom, we have white and then a really beautiful fuchsia color in the background. Flanking the um, plantings are two lavenders. So we kind of wanted a very colorful pop. And as you notice, we put the dianthus in the front because they're the smallest, lowest growing plant. So lots of options for planting. Um, this way we're using this kind of in a, in a bed, but because these dianthus will grow very successfully in your ground beds. Um, they also do really well in containers. And in containers, you could plant them with hookahs and all kinds of other plants to kind of bring out the color and their pop. And they should be in bloom right now, so that'd be a great fall container choice. So I'm in our backyard now, and we're back to this kind of grouping that you saw Sean talk about here. And what I wanted to point out back here is another use for these dianthus, which we're using it, is kind of a border. Now, granted, we have this calabrocoa that actually we, f we randomly found in our yard, you guys, and we just planted it here and it's thriving and doing really well. So there's that, but the dianthus was supposed to kind of be this border plant. And we're excited for it to grow larger so we can divide it, like Sean was saying, and we're gonna spread it up and down the border a little bit more. So we want to just bright pop of pink every year. It's a perennial, again, in our zone, so that's exciting. So you can really plan around it now. Um, what we decided to do, we have a row of kind of begonias, all different colors of beautiful, bright, mostly bright pink begonias. So great companion plants right there. We have hookra. We have, um, what else do we have? Hostas. They're really small right now because they're pretty new, but we just fell in love with this Shadowland, um, I always forget the name, Diamond Lake. It has kind of a bluish tint to it and how 
cool is that with the bluish kind of grayish foliage of that dianthus right there so that we're really excited for this hosta to come back even larger next year and it'll really set off the color there that's going to look be gorgeous and then again these hookras this is um, dolce toffee tar uh, toffee tart from proven winners so we kind of sean and i always experiment a lot and we have really enjoyed watching these thrive with all of these other plants that you may or may not think to plant with so again, dianthus is very versatile because you can really just kind of plant it with just about anything. As long as they have the same growing conditions and care needs, then you, you can experiment as well. So, wow, what a plant. And yeah. we feel so fortunate to have it in our garden. Um, maybe you want to add it to your garden. Hopefully all this information that we presented to you today will help you make that decision. Oh yeah, you know what? I forgot to mention that um, this Paint the Town series, it's, um, we have again, magenta that we showed you. It also comes in red, fuchsia and fancy fancy pants and all four of those plants are available online you can order them actually and have them shipped to your house from uh, provenwinners.com and you know we want to mention too that uh, we planted these plants out here they're still in transplant shock uh, we're treating them as new plants we're not gonna put them through any drought conditions or anything like that because they are still becoming established mm -hmm. so please make sure when you put new plants out in your garden that you come at it from the same angle the same tack and treat them like they're brand new plants. Try not to have them go through any drought conditions or any extreme stress. Yeah, good good point. And, and for more plant care information, including flowers, plants in your yard, um, mulching, pruning, all that kind of stuff, um, check out our new book, The First Time Gardener Growing Plants and Flowers. It'll be at a link down below, and it's available at Amazon or wherever you buy books. Now, if you have any comments or questions about what we cover here today, go ahead and leave those down below for us. We love hearing from you. And make sure to subscribe if you haven't already so you get updates on our latest videos. And that's a wrap, you guys. Thank you for watching and for joining us today. And we'll be back with our next video. So come on back. Yep. See you later. Bye. Bye-bye.